Welcome back everybody, Professor G. I want to take uh, time in this video to focus primarily on St. Augustine of Hippo, um, who was a 4th and 5th century uh, AD philosopher of North Africa around the city of Carthage uh, in uh, the, what was then the Roman Empire. And I chose Augustine because Augustine gives us some um, particularly interesting insight into life in the latter half of the Roman Empire. Now, we haven't really talked a whole lot about the Roman Empire, and unfortunately we won't get a, uh, too much of a chance to talk about it completely as, as much as I'd like to. I'll, I'll put some links on the website if you want some more historical context. But Rome will fall in the 5th century, and Augustine's actually... Uh, one of the only people, the only primary source that we have about the fall of Rome. Augustine writes about the fall of Rome in his book, The City of God. And by the time of Augustine, the Roman Empire has already reached its peak and is on a gradual decline. Uh, they're facing uh, external threats from barbarian tribes, both in northern Europe. Uh, they're also facing uh, internal threats with a, a constant competition amongst these Roman senators, amongst these Roman generals, uh, constantly vying for power. But by the time of Augustine, Rome is an empire, meaning it is being ruled by a Caesar. Before, uh, it was a republic. Okay, but now, now it's an empire. Augustine is, he gives us insight because Augustine is operating... Uh, in the midst of a very tumultuous time, intellectually speaking. There are several different competing ideologies, competing philosophies uh, that, were, uh, that were presented with Augustine, that Augustine was presented with, that were vying for his attention. Um, and it's a pretty interesting mix-up that was going on here. So, uh, first of all, we have the Greek philosophical schools. Uh, so we talked about Platonism in the last video. Uh, Plato's student Aristotle. You, have to, you also have the Aristotelian school. Uh, you have the Epicureans. You have the Stoics. You have the Greek mystery cults. All of these represent not necessarily just academic subject matters. It wasn't just you went to the Platonist school to study Plato. But these were ways of life. These were uh, general philosophical schools that encompass not just your intellectual pursuits, but also what you did in your day-to-day -day life. Um, you dressed differently. You acted differently. These were sort of like uh, modern-day cliques, right? Um, so when I was in high school, we had like grunge and emo people like you could you would look at the, how these people dressed and how they acted and say oh well that person is an emo um very similar thing back then not with the like the whole depressing like i only listen to i'm in touch with my emotions and listen to crappy music type stuff it was much deeper than that um but you would be able to look at a person and say oh that person's a platonist or oh that person's an aristotelian um so you had these philosophical schools uh, and Plato, of course, the, the Platonist school was based off of the writings of Plato, the Aristot Aristotelian school based on the writings of Aristotle, but you also had new budding and developing religions. Uh, perhaps most importantly is Christianity. Uh, now, Christianity is a religion that doesn't quite take its final form until about the 3rd century. So, Augustine is living about 100 years after the Council of Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea was held in 325. It was brought together by the Emperor Constantine. And it's at Nicaea that we get the first formal Christian creed. The first formal declaration of what Christianity is, as opposed to what Christianity is not. And it's around this time that Christian thinkers are really, are really struggling with their identity. What exactly did it mean to be Christian? What exactly were Christians supposed to believe? Uh, this may sound kind of uh, strange that they were struggling with this 300 years after Jesus, uh, but they were by the time of Augustine, they were trying to work out their theology. Um, it's around this time that we get the development of Trinitarian theology. The idea of the Trinity develops a bit later than the writings of the Gospels. Okay? In the first century, uh, around 60 to 70 to 90 
A.D., we have the writings of the Gospels and also the writings of, for example, the letters of Paul and Peter to the early churches, but we don't really have like a systematic theology. Right? Christians knew about Jesus and they knew about the teachings of Jesus, uh, but it's not really until the 4th century that Christians start to sit down and say, okay, what is it that we believe exactly? What do we believe about Jesus? Was he the son of God? Is that like a metaphor? Was he really God? Most of these big questions, well, some of these big questions are handled in the Council of Nicaea with the uh, affirmation that Jesus is both fully God and fully human. Okay, try to wrap your head around that one. Um, but a lot of the theology that we're used to is concerning God's attributes, God's characteristics, about Jesus' continuing relationship with the church, the ongoing. The, the early Christian church really struggled to distinguish itself and to figure out what it meant within the context of Judaism. Well, by this time, the, the Christian church and the, Jew, and, um, the Jewish uh, church had split. Judaism and Christianity were now two distinct religions, and so it's in the 5th century that Christianity is really trying to figure out, well, what exactly does it mean to be Christian? And, and Augustine is probably the most important founding church father in terms of his influence on Christian thought. Uh, several different notions that Augustine develops would become fundamental to Christianity as a whole, and some of these notions you're probably familiar with today. Uh, Augustine writes a lot on this idea of free will and what exactly free will means. What exactly does it mean to freely accept the invitation of Christ? What does it mean to freely accept salvation? Is salvation, that's, is, is salvation something that God gives to us? Or is it something that we have to choose? This view won't be really challenged until Martin Luther in the 16th century, but Augustine develops this notion of free will. Uh, Augustine also develops this concept of original sin. Augustine talks about uh, original sin within relationship to the uh, Genesis creation story about Adam and Eve and the introduction of sin into the world. Um, and Augustine's also going to is going to centralize, is going to focus on and slowly develop a, a new sort of distinctly Christian understanding of God. But Augustine's also a philosopher. Um, he begins his career not as a Christian and not even as a philosopher, but as a Manichaean. Uh, Manichaeanism was a religion that was uh, pretty popular in northern Africa at the time. It's sort of an offshoot of Christianity. So again, uh, we see there, there were several, there's not like one Christian church. What we would today call the Catholic Church was around, but it wasn't really codified, okay? You had, you had different branches of Christianity. Um, you had the Arminians. Um, you had the Manichaeans, you had the Gnostics, and the Manichaeans um, were very similar to the Gnostics. They believed that the God of the Old Testament was essentially evil, and that Jesus was essentially good, and that Jesus came to earth as a God to battle the God of the Old Testament. They were competing, sorry, they were competing against... They were competing against each other, um, and Jesus had come to defeat the God of the Old Testament. So that probably sounds a bit strange to you, but you had these different conceptions of Christianity. And Augustine's really going to serve to provide the philosophical basis for thinking about what Christianity means in a sort of systematic way. So you're going to read a, a chapter, a selection from a book called Augustine's Confessions. Augustine's Confessions is perhaps one of the first, if not the first, autobiography in history. It's, it's pretty interesting from that perspective because most ancient people didn't really think, we don't really get an insight into the ancient person's mind. We don't have ancient people writing about, uh, like keeping like journals like we would think of today or like blogs, writing their opinions about different things that are happening. Um, but Augustine's really one of the first to do that. And he's also one of the first to write about his personal experience. Specifically speaking, his confessions focuses on his conversion to Christianity, his conversions from Manichaeanism 
to Christianity. Well, first, from Manichaeism to a form of Neoplatonism. Uh, Augustine is a Platonist in many respects. Uh, and from Neoplatonism to Christianity. But his Neoplatonism is still there. And this is something that we see quite a bit throughout uh, ancient thinkers. They, they adopt Christianity, but this Christianity is still held within the context of their philosophical school of choice. Uh, specifically, in the case of Augustine, his Platonism. <coughs> Excuse me. So Augustine's going to be writing about um, some pretty interesting philosophical ideas <coughs> that no one had really written about before. He's going to be thinking about concepts um, that Christians hadn't really had the time or the effort to apply their thought to. Uh, he's going to th think about the nature of the Trinity. He's going to be thinking about the nature of prayer, uh, the nature of time. Uh, the, he's going to be working out the concept of the Holy Spirit, right? And some of these questions are going to seem kind of silly to us because um, we might have a more sophisticated answer to these questions. But you got to remember, Augustine is probably one of the first persons, one of the first, uh, the first person to ask these sorts of general questions. So within Christianity, for example, we have this notion of the Trinity. Uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is supposed to indwell within Christians. So Augustine, again, he's new to Christianity. Some of the stuff is, is completely new to him. So he says, well, uh, you know, I have the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit indwells within me. Well, what exactly does that mean? Like, is the Holy Spirit just in my hand? Is he in my head? Like, where exactly in my body is the Holy Spirit, Spirit dwelling? If I, like, chop off my arm, does my severed arm still have the Holy Spirit? So he's going to be working through these sorts of weird, what we consider weird, theological questions. But he's also going to ask some very interesting questions regarding reality. Uh, Augustine is one of the first philosophers to grapple with this notion of time. Uh, Augustine famously says, uh, time is that thing which, uh, if I'm not thinking about it, I know exactly what it is. But if you were to press me on it, what is time, uh, I won't really be able to provide you an answer because it's such a strange thing. So anyway, give Augustine's Confessions a good reading. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me and we can work through some of these problems together. See you next time, guys.